firefighters uh, Derek Spinaleri and Robert Lehman who went to the south of you also. Well, let me just give you a, um, a briefing of where we stand as far as the uh, backdrop and the investigation of this fire and then you can uh, ask any questions you may have. Um, as we mentioned earlier, investigators have officially uh, determined this fire is of undetermined origin, but they are leaning towards likely caused by unattended cooking materials. Uh, the fire it did begin on the third floor. I can tell you that the woman that was rescued by these two firefighters behind me here uh, was taken, taken down from the third floor out of the apartment that, uh, where the fire actually began. Uh, she was transported to Mass General Hospital. Uh, I have no update on her condition as of right now. But the, uh, the fire, as you can see, uh, did a tremendous amount of damage throughout the building. Uh, and the building has been declared a total loss and is scheduled to be torn down as soon as the demolition crews can get to that. Um, smoke alarms were working in the building, apparently. Some residents have reported to us that they, they did hear smoke alarms activated throughout the building. Uh, whether the entire smoke alarm system was activated, that uh, is still part of the investigation. I don't know that, but there were some smoke alarms working in the building. So with that, that's essentially where uh, the investigation of this fire stands right now, and um, we're more than willing to take any questions from you. Steve, are we talking about a stove fire? Uh, smoke, all the investigators have determined that it was related apparently to cooking that that resident was doing. Whether that's a stove or a toaster oven or a microwave or whatever, is not clear at this time, but apparently it was related to cooking materials. I don't even know that she was taken out of the building. She was taken out of the building. Uh, these gentlemen can talk to you about her condition uh, when they discovered her when they got to her. Was How she an elderly woman? Uh, the word I had that she was uh, a woman in her 60s, I believe, somewhere in that area. Not quite elderly. Not quite elderly. <laughs> so right now you guys are going in and you're helping these people get what they can. How important is that? Well, that's hugely important, as you can imagine. These people have uh, they've lost. No problem. The yeah. the first and second floor specifically, we are able to go in and hopefully be able to okay. see yeah, that, No, no, I'm here. Uh, and their possessions that are in there. Uh, any residents in the third floor, uh, everything in the third floor is completely inaccessible. So we won't be able to see any of their material, but hopefully we may be able to help the uh, first and second floor residents and salvage some of um, uh, basically what is their whole lives inside that building. Pets, I guess. Uh, pets, I saw you guys did bring out one cat yep. late last night. Any other recovery of pets? Sir? One cat was rescued alive and well by one of our firefighters. Uh, some of the other residents have reported uh, their pets are unaccounted for. Um, so they're apparently uh, uh, famous. Uh, pets that inside there. Um, that's what that's uh, Haven't been able to care about it. These are the two firemen that uh, did the rescue yesterday. My name is Firefighter Derek Spitaleri. Wow. Firefighter uh, Bobby Lehman. So we, 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 were, uh, we were assigned to Ladder Company 1 yesterday. We arrived here for a fire and there was heavy fire and smoke blowing out of the BC corner of the building on the third floor from one of the apartments. And, uh, Bob and I immediately went with the rest of our crew to make entry and do some searches and uh, help the engine companies get their hose lines in place. And um, we made the apartment door that we knew the, uh, the fire was in. And we went, uh, we forced the door for the apartment. Uh, we said we were on the, the ladder company. We said they were trying to get entry and uh, get the engine in there so they get the water on the fire. Uh, we made the hallway, a lot of smoke, a lot of heat. Uh, really couldn't see much, both of us were on our hands and knees. We went, we located where the fire was, we told the engine company which was behind us where the fire was. Uh, then we ended up started doing a search and we found another room which ended up to be a, a, a bedroom we believe. Um, we started searching it, as we started to search the, the bedroom we heard someone moaning and uh, we found somebody in the room and uh, uh, Derek and I sat there, we both communicated to each other that we did have a victim and we uh, both took steps to uh, extricate the victim uh, from the f from the room and then extricate her out uh, of the building. If you guys had to crawl on your hands and knees through these conditions, how did you get her out? We uh, just just together teamwork, our training, um, 
You know, it's just what we do. It's nothing different than any other firefighter across the country encounters every day when we, when we encounter situations like this. Did you have to throw over your shoulder? No, we just we, we limb carried her. Yeah, we, we just actually. we both the two of us just sat there and we we knew we were you know, not only we worked together with friends and we just we knew what we had to do. I mean, there was no no discussion. It was just like all right. She's in here, we have to get her out of here. We just gotta make it work. And that's what we did, and we, we dragged her out kind of crawling, and then we just kept on going until we could get to a, a safer environment. How intense were the conditions at that point? They were, there was, there was an intense amount of heat, an intense amount of smoke. She was clearly overcome by smoke inhalation, and the fire was, was actually venting out of the kitchen over our heads as we went past the fire into the bedroom that she was that we ended up finding her in. And did you know someone was going to be in there? No, no, we did not. We were doing a search. It's what we do. We do a primary search when the engine company is trying to get their hose lines in place to try to get anybody out of there before they start spraying water on the fire. And um, we got her out. Bobby and I carried her down all the way down the hallway, down to the second floor landing. It was a little, where it was a little safer. Um, I took my air mask off and uh, immediately put it on the victim and turned my, my purge valve on so there would just be a constant flow of air and we carried in the west, rest of the way out of the building down to this first floor landing here and the ambulance and paramedics met us out front and they kind of took charge. She's the only person in the building? She was the only person that we encountered. How, how close was the fire to her and uh, did she appear to have it? It was in the next room and I was to see any fire. Five, five, ten feet maybe. But we had no visibility. Either. Yeah, we just, we saw the fire off to our left and then we, we sat there we had told the engine where the fire was and then we continued past the fire room to search and then we found her. So it was, it was, you know, within one room next to the adjoining rooms is what from the fire station was. How long do you think she had? I'm sorry? How long do you think she had in there? Oh, she was, I mean, I mean, visibility in the hallway never mind inside of her apartment there was zero visibility inside of her apartment other than the kitchen where the kitchen was self-venting and free burning well, we don't know if we were we would have said that we would have like the address was like if I was you know a couple feet away it's like you're just like crawling you just to pick up on anybody if you crawled into a bedroom you crawled into a mattress you know what it is I think we do our searches in methodical ways yeah and our training is obviously if you run into a bed you checked, you sweep the bed, and that's what we were doing. We were sweeping the bed, and as we were sweeping it, we heard a moan. So, did this happen while you were in there? Well, this <laughs> combination, <laughs> with the combination of events. What's your full name? Um, Bobby Lehman, L-E-H-M-E-N. 